throne judgment, the great white throne judgment, but also are not quite sure about the difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment, or if there's any really any difference at all. And so we can say that we, uh, we know this by ear. We, we've heard about this, and we know it's in the Bible, and we know it's going to happen in the future, but we're not really quite sure. We can't really put a finger if we're, if we're asked exactly what that is. You know, as a young boy, growing up, I was told by someone, uh, a teacher of mine, um, and, and wrongly, that one day I would be standing before God, and there would be a big TV screen, and, and uh, it would be brought out, and God would show every single sin that I would commit, and that everyone in the, in the, whole, uh, the whole place would, uh, would witness, or in heaven, I guess, would witness uh, every single thing that I did. Well, that surely scared me from uh, committing sin, uh, but not for very long. It made me think twice about uh, doing those wrong things, but uh, not for very long. And by the way, that is not true. That is not in Scripture. And, uh, and I don't mean it's okay for us to uh, sin or to commit uh, secret sins. And, but I have come to realize, in fact, that in this life, we don't have to wait until a big screen is taken out or, or pulled out in, in heaven. And we don't have to wait for that big TV screen in order for our sin to find us out. We don't have to wait for that day. In this life, in this life that we live, we can be sure if you're a child of God, that the sins that you commit in secret... Uh, the Bible says your sin will find you out. It can get ugly, it can get painful, it can leave scars, it can uh, sever relationships. It can be painful, embarrassing when those secret sins are revealed. We don't need a TV screen. It will all come out in the open. That's what God said. If you're a child of God. But going back to our subject this morning, I believe that we ought to know we ought to know for certain and not just by ear. We need to know for certain what this judgment seat of Christ is all about. We need to know for certain what this great white throne judgment is all about, not just by ear, but according to the verses in Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. If you will turn with me, please. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We need to be ready always to give an answer of the hope that is in us. But if we don't really know uh, where in Scripture uh, it, it shows us uh, about, uh, for in this case, the judgment seat of Christ, uh, we won't have an answer. We won't have a ready answer for those who will ask of us. And that's why, by the way, we go through discipleship class. And discipleship class is not only just for new believers. Believe me, uh, when I was teaching disciples this discipleship class, I learned so much. Uh, things that probably I, I, I knew about in the past, I, again, I knew by ear. But going through discipleship class, I, I saw the verses in Scripture that talked about biblical separation. That talked about uh, sin. That talked about uh, the need to remain faithful. The, the need to get baptized. All these things. It's because it is in the pages of Scripture. The Word of God. That's why we also have uh, Sunday school. Because there we have. A, it's a Bible study. And we really look into the verses. That talk about. In, in today's uh, lesson. We talk about the characteristics of God. And that's why we'll be conducting personal evangelism classes. So that when a person asks what it means to become born again, how to become born again, we will be able to open to Scripture and show them exactly what it means to become born again. You know, yesterday, a Tibetan man uh, asked me, we had our uh, uh, street evangelism yesterday, we, we gave out coffee, and we had a good time uh, um, you know, talking to a lot of people yesterday, but this man came up and he asked me several questions and made me realize that we need to be equipped we need to be equipped with the Word of God. Otherwise, we lose opportunities to tell people about Christ. To many people, there seems to be a great disconnect between Christ and the way the Christians have dealt with non-Christians in the past and even in the present. How do we witness to these folks? 
uh, about the love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus if we don't really know what Scripture is talking about. You know, a whole lot of people today, I, I meet people and, and they just say, you know, all we need is to be good in this life and we'll be okay. That's all we need to be. Because if we're going to be good, we uh, treat others well, then the good Lord will, will take care of us and that's all that we need to, uh, to, be, to do. Well, see, again, if we don't know the verses in Scripture, we won't be able to explain to the person that yes, we need to be good and, and being good is a result of, our, our, of Christ in us, but good works apart from Christ is really uh, worth nothing. And so that is why we need to be ready. That's why we need to study this this morning. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. If you will turn there. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. We're talking about the judgment seat of Christ. Hebrews 9 27 says, And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Clearly, there will be a day of reckoning for every person. Each one will stand before God one day, and not one person will miss the day of judgment. Not one person will miss the, the opportunity uh, to stand before God and give an account of himself. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. Look at what he says here. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You might want to underline that. Judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account, a give account of himself to God. No one will escape the judgment of God. But one day he will face uh, God. Uh, whether the judgment seat of Christ, and we'll look at later uh, the great white throne judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. And again, that's our text this morning. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There, you might want to underline that. That everyone may receive the things uh, done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The outline this morning is quite simple. If you're taking notes, quite simple. Number one, let's look at who will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Who will appear before the judgment seat of Christ? When will be this judgment seat of Christ? The second point. And then third, what is the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ? And then fourth, how do we prepare for the judgment seat of Christ? First of all, who will appear before the judgment seat of Christ? You'll see both Romans chapter 14, we read it already, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 clearly establish that the judgment seat of Christ is not for every person. This particular judgment is for the child of God alone. Now, a person who is not a child of God uh, will appear before the great white throne judgment. That those, uh, those who have rejected Christ, those who will reject Christ, uh, will reject the plan of salvation that God has laid down, will appear before the judgment, a uh, great white throne judgment. We're not going to be focusing on the great white throne judgment. We're going to be focusing this morning on the judgment seat of Christ, uh, before which every believer, child of God, will appear. But just very quickly, go with me, Revelation chapter 20. This verse talks about the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. This is what's going to happen on that uh, day. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Um, uh, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead which, uh, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. See? According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell uh, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
My friend, the lake of fire is real. That's what the Bible says. And those who are not going to be found in the Lamb's book of life, those who are not God's children, will be judged according to their works. Yes, those who were good, those who had great deeds, but were not, uh, did not trust in Christ by faith, they will be judged according to their works. But at the end of that judgment, they will be cast into the lake of fire. And I believe there's going to be degrees uh, of heat and, and torment in the lake of fire. Again, they will be judged according to their works. But see, if you're a child of God, you will not appear before the great white throne judgment. You will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The question this morning is, let's take a pause, is are you a child of God? A very important question. Are you a child of God? You say, Pastor, aren't we all God's children? My friend, sadly, it is not uh, so. We are not all God's children. But let me tell you this. God wants all to be His children. John chapter 1, verse 12. If you will turn with me. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, But as many as received Him, as many as received Him, as many as received Him, to them gave Him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Sadly, not everyone is a child of God, but as many as will receive Christ, to them He will give power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Galatians chapter 3 verse 20. Galatians chapter 3 verse 20. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And so those who do not have faith in Christ Jesus or don't trust Jesus Christ by faith in what He did on the cross, His finished work, they cannot be called the children of God. Go further, chapter, uh, same chapter, verse, I mean chapter 4, the next chapter, look in verse 4 through 7. This is what happened. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman, made under the law. And what was the purpose? Verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God had sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Not all are God's children, but uh, God came, uh, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, uh, not to condemn the world, but that the all world uh, might believe and come to repentance and become a child of God, be adopted into the family of God. I just want to make that clear this morning. And that is our message. We go out there on the streets, and we tell people uh, to repent from sin. That's what the Bible says. We tell people to become a child of God. And because that is the desire of God. So uh, again, uh, first uh, in our outline is who will appear, appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Go back to 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. Why do we say that only God's children will appear before this uh, judgment seat? It says here, for we must all appear. Here, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the Christians in Corinth, to the brethren in Corinth. And so he was addressing the believers. He says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The same thing goes for Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Here we see the Apostle Paul um, admonishing the Christian. Um, and, and so it is addressed to the brethren. And he says, uh, we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And so, again, who will appear before the judgment seat of Christ? Only the children of God. Secondly, when will the judgment seat of Christ take place? When will this take place? Now, some, some believe that it will take place right after the rapture. But I believe from Scripture, uh, Hebrews 9.27 says, It is a point of the man wants to die, but after this the judgment. I believe. The moment a person dies, a Christian, a child of God dies. Oh, unless Christ returns already. But when a person dies, a child of God, immediately he stands before God and stands for judgment. And I believe that he stands for the white, uh, ju uh, the judgment seat of Christ. That's what I believe. And I believe it is based on Scripture. Thirdly, what is the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ? What is the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ? First of all, what it is not. It is not about salvation. 